I bought this Kenmore Elite Oasis high efficiency washing machine from a guy off Craigslist. He was convinced it was a bearing problem. He had Excel Energy warranty uh, repair tech come out and do some maintenance on it. They took it and they put a brand new stator motor on, a uh, rotor and motor control unit, uh, wiring harness, and RPS on. Uh, I did a diagnostic mode on it, which is where you hold the spin button for five seconds three times. It came back with an F51 error code. Before the basin wouldn't spin. That was the problem. That's why they got a new one, or they replaced, you know, they just bought new ones. Um, I, I googled it. The F51 error code is the RPS, which is the rotor position sensor. I took it apart down to the stator motor and inspect the rotor position sensor, and it had a break in the chip right here. As you can see, this is what it's supposed to look like. That's what this one looked like. It's actually broken. You can see that curvature. So, if you look closely there, those little connections, those little lines running through the chip are what make the thing run. You know, it's what gives it electric, those are the electrical lines to the piece. So, since this one is broken, I went on Craigslist and found another machine, a whole other machine, which had a low fill error. It was periodic, he said he'd get it every couple of weeks or months or whatever. And uh, so I bought that one from him for 40 bucks. But this machine is six or seven years old, whereas this one's four years old. And it has a brand new stator motor, brand new electrical control unit, um, brand new wiring harness. And, and unfortunately, the techs with the Excel Energy warranty program who put in this new bracket and this new RPS sensor broke the sensor. Um, they roughhoused with it. They even put a screw through one of the wiring harnesses uh, holding the top of the display um, unit. And so I had to kind of splice that and put some tape, some electrical tape over those connections. They really cowboyed this machine, you could tell. Um, yeah, so they broke this sensor when they put it back on. This is not, what, <laughs> this is not like something that would happen like under ordinary conditions. Basically this sensor fits inside of this bracket. This black bracket right here is the new bracket. They did a revision of the bracket that holds it on. And it actually holds it in a circular fashion like that. And as you can see when I took it, the stator motor off and looked at the back of it I could tell that uh, you know there's something not right here. It looked good right here. But then when you get over here you're like okay yeah that's a problem. That ain't right. So, took it out and I saw that the chip was broken. This actually fits on right here. The new, it just slides on. The old rotor position sensor actually has less of a curve in it. This is, uh, holds the sensor in a circular fashion up against the stator. Um, so that they're li linear or, you know, parallel with each other on the, uh, on the curvature of the the motor. Well, the, the older sensor bracket, which is white, is less aggressive. It's not so circular. It doesn't have such a sharp bend in it like this one does, which, you know, might have caused it to break. It's a particularly fragile little sensor, and I could see if someone were to just um, forcing it in there real quick, you know, they could easily snap it, which is what I think happened. Based on, like, the hole and the wiring harness up here, I could tell that someone was being aggressive and quick with it. You know, they weren't taking their time. So anyways, what I was originally going to do is I was going to just replace the bracket and sensor from one to the other. But the difference is in the sensors, is, and there's only one difference, otherwise the chip itself is exactly the same, is that the new one actually has this black um, connecting piece on it. Whereas the old one, is just, just delete this from your imagination, this black piece, and it's just the chip, and it had some... Um, contact points just directly on the chip with the connector to just slides right onto the connector. So I was dashed. My hopes were dashed, you know. Um, the only thing I could have checked out, which actually worked out, was that the wiring harnesses had different colored wires, so I couldn't do any splicing, but the connectors were identical. These connectors right here, these are the top side connectors, connect to the electrical control unit up here. Those connected fine. So all I needed to do 
and all the connectors for like the water pumps on the on the bottom were the same the only difference was this piece here which connects to the center so I was actually just able to just swap the wiring harness from the old machine onto the new machine with the old sensor which in my opinion that older sensor had a better bracket um, it held the chip much better much more securely which is probably why it wasn't broken yeah and I just put it all back together and the machine works great you gotta hold this for five seconds three times um, yeah it'll come up and it'll do a diagnostic mode just hit start a bunch of times the F51 error code is is gone it'll do a testing diagnostic mode as you can see so there's the proof that I have fixed this machine um, that hum is the water pump the water's not actually hooked up to the machine right now so this is what a stator motor looks like some additional details these things get a lot of torque this isn't like in a traditional motor where it spools up and it spins and it remains an RPM. This machine only moves back and forth or you know, one direction or the other. There's a lot more torque and a lot more power at lower RPMs with these stator motors. And as you can see, there is a crack in this stator motor. Okay, um, That's because these things are getting torqued on. This rotor goes on the outside, and this rotor is what spins the tub. This, this piece is strong, but they're made of plastic. This has magnets on the outside. This is the con concept of a stator motor. Um, this came off the old machine. It's still fine. It still works great. Um, I'm going to put it back together, but what I need to do is get a new RPS sensor for this, since I took it and put it in there. So now I have two of these machines, and so I'm going to probably sell this one or keep it. Who knows? See what I, what I can't get for it. But the sensor is $67 from repairclinic.com. That's the cheapest I've been able to find it. Um, so that's why I went and bought a second machine rather than just getting the sensor. Um, yeah. So that's basically how this went down. Uh, I found out that the piece itself was more expensive that needed to be replaced, that sensor. So I just got the second machine. It worked out great for me. Uh, I'm a kind of a technical, technical kind of handy type of guy. I got a cracked intake manifold I got to take care of on my car. So I'll be doing that and be taking that off and having my uncle weld that probably. Um, but yeah, here's the proof. Things running great. And I really got to thank this guy for both of these guys. Got to thank him. Uh, these are pretty good machines. Really, really efficient, which is what I like. I got all the uh, efficient bulbs you know, on my house, and if you buy junk food, cigarettes, or beer, you have no reason to say you can't afford uh, efficient stuff. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I'd say the only ridiculous thing about efficient uh, products is LED lights right now are super expensive, 20 plus dollars for one bulb. Um, but you think about it, they last forever. So like I said, if you buy junk food, beer, or cigarettes, you have no reason not to buy efficient stuff. So again, Thanks a bunch. Um, maybe you guys will see this video. Maybe you won't, but maybe it'll help somebody else uh, who has an F51 error code. Just remember that if you have a new or old machine, the wiring harnesses uh, can be swapped out from one machine to the other. And that's what saved the day for me. And also remember, if you have a low fill error, there's a U-shaped bracket that holds your drain like this, and your drain should always be above the tub. I can show you what that bracket looks like. It just holds it like that, so it breaks suction in the line. Otherwise, as it's filling, it'll be leaving the machine. It's difficult to kind of believe, but it's, believe me, <laughs> I tested it out. It's the real deal. All right, that does it. Thanks again. Peace.